Hello there and welcome to my live stream. My name is Bruce from Brankus Creations and I welcome you all here. Uh, I am going to do my normal thing here and just say a quick hello to everyone in the chat. So, hello to Jack68K, hello to Frank S, Gutbomb, Steve from Mac84, uh, Pretzel FTW, Sad Mac356, and Thomas Armstrong, Kai is here. G'day Kai, how are things? Uh, Bob Hunkins, Luke F, yeah, there we go. New intro countdown is so cool. Well, thank you very much. Dana is here. I haven't seen Dana in a while. I hope things are going well in Bathurst. Uh, Mystery Margo, hello. Jared Burma. Um, that uh, post that you did, Dana, of the uh, floppy drive on the PCI card slot, if that thing doesn't actually exist, it bloody should. I'm just saying. Uh, Justin is here. Hello, Justin. Josh Hayes. Uh, Michael White. Hello there. Um, Bathurst is tops. <laughs> the, one of the main reasons why I say that is because I don't know if you ever saw, uh, I think it was on a, um, what's that car show, um, that UK car show, I can't remember what it was called, um, Top Gear. Uh, they were featuring um, a, a, a car once and it was the Bathurst model. And, uh, and the, the host, you know, the little one, the short one, I can't remember his name. Um, he kept on pronouncing it Bathurst. So anyhow, um, did I say hello to you, Bob? If I didn't, hello? I think I did say hello, but I'll say hello again. Hello, Bob. And yeah, it was Top Gear probably. Uh, so, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you. Uh, I haven't live streamed in a little while. Uh, just, you know, life being busy. That's just how it goes. Um, I've got plenty of things here. Do. I think the last thing I did was a Macintosh 2SI. I've had another 2SI board come in, which is, shall we say, interesting. Um, you know, when you take the board out of the bag and stuff falls off it, you know you're in for a fun time. Um, Hammond, that's it. I know, Hammond, yes. Richard Hammond. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, now, uh, I wanted to mention a couple of things here. So, uh, a few streams ago, I worked on a Macintosh SE30 that I found in a barn. I mean, I didn't really. I paid a lot of money for it, but it was stored in a barn. Um, well, stables, actually, but never mind. Um, and Sam Johnson, hello. Um, and uh, anyhow, we recapped it on stream. It all worked. It's all nice. A little bit of burning on the display, but ultimately in pretty good condition. There's a floppy drive that was stuffed in it. I think I tried to fix it and broke it or something. But anyhow. Yeah. So it doesn't have a floppy drive. I mean, it may never have a floppy drive because I don't really care about floppy drives anymore because I've got blue scuzzies and stuff. Um, I might even set up a... A bracket so that you can take the SD card out the front floppy slot, something like that. Mm. Um, and uh, and anyhow, um, I um, when I got that SE30, it had a little adapter in it, and I just wanted to show people and make it show a little reference. So I'm going to jump here quickly to the top view, and this is for the folks out there that like the old vintage Mac stuff and books in particular. This is a book that I bought many many years ago. And it's called Build Your Own Macintosh and Save a Bundle by Bob Brand. And it refers to this thing as the Cat Mac. Cat Mac. Um, and anyhow, there are a few different iterations of this. And I think you may even find a PDF version of this book online somewhere. Uh, it's not this one that's online. This one, I think, is a slightly earlier revision of the book. Because there's different revisions of this book. Where, what are we up to on this one? First edition. First printing. So they did, as they say, make a, rev a revised version of it. But anyhow, in here, well, they talk about how you can save money by making your own Mac and doing your own thing and all that sort of stuff and get hold of Mac parts and build, build your own and then effectively get like a PC box and make a Mac, you know, uh, and save a few dollars. Uh, it's in the Ticket Different Resources section. There you go. Um, open to baby bell. My cat is heavy breathing on the leg in anticipation. Okay, so I take it the uh, the cat likes the cheese then? Well, I mean, let's face it, what cat doesn't? What what mammal doesn't like cheese? Come on, I ask you. Um, right, so, anyhow, uh, I wanted to mention this because one of the things, one of the reasons why when I opened up that Macintosh SC30 that I kind of got a bit excited was because it had this little guy in it here and this little adapter which you can see in the book here. And this was the way that you would be able to take an SE or an SE30 
and um, put the video from that, the video from that onto a um, um, onto an external monitor or a monitor other than the little CRT. Now, of course, one of the things they talk about in this, one of the restrictions they say is that you use this, doesn't matter what size monitor you put on there, it's still gonna be that 512 by, was it 342 display blown up. Is it 342? I think it's 342. Um, so anyhow, the, I like it. I, and I, I'll tell you one of the reasons why I like it. As, as, as Kai has said here, you can actually obviously replicate these relatively straightforward, but I'll tell you why. When I bought this book at the time, which is, let's have a look if we can get a, an approximate date. 1991 it was printed. I probably got it around about that time, 92, 93, something like that. At that time, I used to look at this and these things were, well, if they were around, I certainly couldn't afford them. There was no internet back then. So it's not like I could go down to the shop and grab them. Any, every single place that they mention in this where you buy things is in America. It's not here in Australia. So I saw this and I just drooled. I thought, how cool would that be to just have your own external monitor instead of the little CRT or whatever. And, but this was, for me in Australia, it was essentially unobtainium. So, um, so seeing this did bring some nostalgic feelings. But anyhow, I just wanted to mention that. We'll, we'll move along. Um, <clears throat> uh, another thing I also want to mention is my Macintosh SE30. Um, if people have seen some of my posts in places, uh, my Macintosh SE30 is now grayscale. I will be doing a video on that later, but it'll be a pre-recorded rather than a, a live stream. So Bol, um, one of the many legends in uh, the vintage computing group, he, um, he did not actually replicate the Micronic Seed. Some people know of the Micronic Seed. It would allow you to make your um, Macintosh SE or SE30 grayscale. Um, but uh, he didn't, act, no, sorry, only SE30. You can't do the SE because it doesn't have the slot. Um, so SE30 grayscale, and he didn't actually replicate that. Uh, he replicated the neck board from the Micron, but he uh, actually used a 4Mac uh, accelerator because they're a lot easier for him to find parts to make them today. So anyhow, I paid him an exorbitant amount of money, worth every cent, don't get me wrong. It's like, you know, R&D, all that sort of stuff. But I sent him an exorbitant amount of money and he sent one of these to me and it's basically a, uh, a card and then a cable and then a neckboard thing and it's beautifully made, slotted in and plugging and plugging and plugging. And then you even have the option to increase the resolution slightly of the display. So instead of being 512 by 342, you can make it 512 by 384, the same resolution as the LC 12 inch monitor. And that app actually opens up a few doors when it comes to game playing, because there are a few games that will have a minimum size requirement of that LC 12 inch screen. So anyhow, that's um, that's that. Let me just quick, uh, Frank C, hello. Um, I have an ATS cat Mac, well, how about that? Um, YouTube finished processing my live stream last night, so now I can edit to fix a mistake I made. <gasps> what mistake did you make? I know I saw you make a mistake, but are you going to cut that out or did you actually say something incorrect? Justin made a great boo-boo in his uh, video yesterday. He was recapping a power supply and when he went to assemble it, he forgot to plug the, the power point, the power plug into the main power supply board. Oops! Um, and that was a bit of fun. Uh, LC introduced the uh, 512 by 384 res, yep. Um, and uh, I believe Steve, Steve, you have also uh, just released a video recently, so feel free to stick the old uh, linkeroonie in the chatteroonie um, and that. So, uh, and I should also do this. Uh, yeah. Now, um, right, so I, as people will see from the, uh, the thumbnail and from what the video is called, I am going to be working on this. Ah, Jay from the House of Moth is here. He would want to be, given how much he has been bugging me all week to do a live stream, that when I do a live stream, there is a definite expectation that he will arrive and be present um, and share his knowledge. Um, I had a very interesting situation this week with uh, kitchen appliances. So we had, let's call it sort of like a cascade of failures. So started off with a microwave oven that died. 
Um, I have ordered some parts that are coming from China. Um, so in the meantime, I bought a very, very cheap microwave just to keep us going. Because, you know, I don't cook, do a lot of cooking with microwaves. But when it comes to reheating leftovers, they are very, very handy. Um, so just got a little temporary microwave while I wait for these parts to come from China. Uh, I think they'll probably arrive next week, if with a bit of luck. I uh, then had the oven fail on me, um, and I repaired that. Uh, so that's okay now. It's, I need to replace one of the relays on it, though. It's a, one of the relays is a bit sticky, uh, and so I need to. I, I I know I have some spares of those relays, but I have to go hunting for them. Uh, and then. Then the dishwasher died. So, um, yeah, it's been fun. Uh, bought a new dishwasher the other day. So, there we go. I tried to fix the dishwasher, but there were so many failed components in it that I decided that even if I went and ordered replacements for all of those failed components, they could arrive and it would st still be uh, stuffed. So, yeah. So this here is a caddy load CD-ROM drive. Now, what is really interesting about these, these were the first types of CD-ROMs that were available, and they uh, they had, so you had to actually put the CD into a caddy to put it into the drive. Now, what we look at now is a fairly silly thing. There was a justification for it at the time. Um, one justification was, of course, that they thought that they would be able to sell a lot of caddies, and there would be a good industry in selling caddies so you'd have to buy these empty caddies what was wrong though is those caddies were actually quite expensive now at a time when cd roms the discs themselves were very expensive there was some justification to it you know i went and bought this software it came on cd rom it cost me a lot of money this disc needs to be protected so i put it in the caddy and then i store it in the caddy and then when I go to use it, I take it out. So that disc is constantly being protected inside that caddy when I have it on a shelf or something like that. But in the, in real, in the real world, what happened was, because those caddies were so expensive, people just bought one caddy and they just swapped discs in and out of it. So in actual fact, it was even more dangerous than just having a tray loading CD because you're putting it in and out of this caddy all the time. So that was, that was one thing. But then the other thing that ended up happening was CD media became really, really cheap. Hello, Dave. Um, and uh, you've got a big day tomorrow, haven't you? Uh, or is it the day after? So, um, um, the, so yeah, so I ended up CD media getting very, very cheap. So the idea of keeping it in a protective caddy just became kind of stupid. It's like, well, if I break this CD, I'll just burn another one. You know, well, they're, they're, you know, it started off, I mean, I remember some of the first CDs I bought were like 10 plus dollars each. And then it got down to the point you were, you know, it was cents. It was a few cents to get a, a, um, a, CD, a blank CD. So anyhow, they're a little piece of history and I kind of like them. And I love the little mechanism at the front here that when you put the disc in, so you've got this little plastic cover here that says CD Caddy. But when it's got a disc in there, a little cover comes down saying loaded or something like that. What does it say? We can bring it down. Well, we'll, we'll open it up and we'll have a look at what it says. It says something. Um, now, these are notorious for capacitor leakage. They're not a particularly fun thing to recap. I will say that someone in the chat early on sort of said, I heard these are a good thing to practice on. There are aspects of them that are quite good, but there are other things about them that I think really suck. Um, so, I, and I'll go through that as we do this. I, mean, I think I have actually done a video might have even been a pre-recorded video of me working on one of these. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got to take this front plate off. I can never remember what order these things are supposed to come apart in, but it doesn't matter too much, so don't freak out. Do -do 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 -do. Yay! Okay, so let's have a look at what the little panel says when it's... When you, put the, when you put the disc in, this that goes in, and then this comes down in place and it says caddy loaded. It's really cool because it happens just instantaneously and it's just like a cute little mechanism. Caddy loaded, city, oh, stay up. Uh, putting these back together again so that this mechanism still works is a freaking nightmare. I'll just tell you that right off the bat. All right, let's get this sucker off here. 
Oh, we come. Oh, we come. There we go. There's the. Oh. All right. Oh, no. it's uh, it's not gooey. It's solid. Whatever it is, it's just leftover. I mean, unless something's melted inside here, it's always possible. Hmm. Oh well, we'll find out, won't we? We'll try. Is that a CD150 or a CD300? I've seen Caddy load two times CD300s before, but I know they're rarer than the tray loader mod mo module. Module? Module. Model. 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 Let's have a look. This is a... That's the Sony model. CDU561. It does, it does... I don't think it actually has an Apple label on it. It doesn't. It doesn't have an Apple label on it, so there's no Apple branding on this at all. Only so Sony, and that's the CDU five six one twenty five. So I don't know whether you can find out anything from that CDU five six one twenty five. Um, we've got all these little plugs on the side, which we need to unplug. Um, none of these plugs, you know, when it comes to putting them back together, they can only go in one way. It's not like you can get these plugs mixed up. Each connector is slightly different to the other, so you can't get them mixed up. So you don't need to really take too much note of what's going, what's getting plugged in, because if, when you go to reconnect them, if it doesn't fit, you've got the wrong hole. Um, and quite a few Apple products are made like that, which I commend. Um, you know, a lot of the time, even like sort of the modern iMacs and stuff like that, when you're pulling them apart and you've got all these cables there, a lot of those cables can only go in one place. They put slightly different connectors on them. Uh, this one actually looks like it's in pretty good condition. I had one of these once where the inside was just a melted mess. I have no idea why, but it was. And this is the board. Now, what sucks about this board is it's made like shit. Um, it is a very, very cheap, cheaply made PCB. It's very different to when you're working on, say, a Mac board of this era. So this has come from a, uh, a Quadro, a Centra 650. And if you uh, look at that board, the quality of that board compared to the quality of this board, big difference. Um, it's a two times drive, okay. Two times drive is good. Originally shipped with a Quadra 840AV is there. Well, obviously with this being a, um, a 650, that was the, I guess the kind of the next 040 wave after the Quadra 840AV. So that would fit, they certainly, a similar era. Uh, the 650 used the same case as the 2VX and 2VI, um, and was it the Performer? It was the Performer 600, which is basically just the 2VX and 2VI with different software included, I think. Um, and Justin's been working on one of those, having a little bit of trouble with the power supply. I highly recommend, Justin, if you're going to be working on those, make yourself up an ATX power supply with that connector on it. It's a standard Molex connector, even though it looks like it's not, it is. Uh, it doesn't, if you get the, if you get the Apple one, it has this, these little things here. But this little part here, this little array of plugs there, is just a standard Molex, whatever it is, three, four, five, ten pin. It's very standard. So you can basically buy that, wire this up to an AT, ATX power supply, and then it does a couple of things. It um, rules out any issues that you might potentially be having with a power supply. But what it also does is you can set these up so that they bypass the soft power circuit. So if you're having a problem with the soft power circuit, it becomes very easy to then diagnose. So. Minifit Junior. Jeez, I'll have to remember that. Commit to brain. Minifit Junior. Minifit Junior. Mm. Minifit Junior. I'm never going to remember that. Oh, look, this is the the head from the floppy drive that I broke before. It's nice to have memories. Um, uh, 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 David Starbuck, hello there. Uh, caddy loading SD slots. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, crikey. Um, all right, so we don't have that many caps on here. You've got this one, 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 and this one. Um, and then you've got this gap here that's not meant to have a cap on it. Even though it looks like it's meant to have a cap on it, it's not meant to have a cap on it. Uh, it's very, very common to get a lot of leakage around here. These ones here are a bit of a cow because they're really, really close together. So I've actually bought specifically small tantalum caps to replace these. 
that just make it a lot easier to put those in because they're not as cramped up with each other. So normally I would replace these with a particular size of cap. Oh crap, I left the caps up in the house. Oh no, I didn't, I brought them down. Because I had to buy some new caps, see? See, so I had to buy some new caps, sir. So normally, normally, I would use a cap of this size to replace a cap of that size, like that. But these ones here, because they're so squished up together, I have bought a few of these little ones to go in place. Now, another problem I always have whenever I'm working on these, I always seem to manage to accidentally remove some of the resistors around here. <sighs> I do, I do, I do. So, let's jump across to the microscope. And there we go, look at that. Isn't that nice? Let's focus it. Focus, focus, focus. I'm going to be doing a review of a microscope coming up in the next, or well, hopefully within the next week. Oh, sorry guys. I just bumped the cable of the microphone and I think it crackles when I do that. So if there was a horrible loud noise, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, do you have any tray load models you can pull the board from to see if there's any difference in the controller boards? Uh, I do, and I have, and there is. I think they are quite different. I, for starters, I don't think they have tantalum, uh, sorry, uh, electrolytic surface mount caps on them. I could be wrong, but I will have a look, Siruni. Um, so, uh, okay, so let's have a look at this under the microscope. That's enough of my yakking. Uh, we can definitely see a lot of gunge here. Um, you've got lots of goo around here, so we've definitely got leakage. It started to actually cause a little bit of corrosion around here, but I've seen a lot worse. Uh, this little guy here that looks like a resistor is not actually a resistor, just in case you're ever wondering. This is a, um, uh, what do they call them? A, um, um, uh, uh, God, brain's gone blank. Someone else will know. They'll tell me. I'll come in here and they'll, uh, 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 inductor? Is that the word? That's the word. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so uh, I just say that because if you're new to e electronics and you look at this and you think, oh, it's a green resistor, yeah, cool. Typically these green ones are inductors, not resistors. And of course you can also tell by the code on the side here, it's an L. Inductors are typically labeled with an L um, and rather than an R for a resistor. So just, just be warned because if you're trying to trace a problem on something and you go, oh, I'm just going to check and see that resistor and then you put the multimeter on it and it goes oh wow that resistor is way out it's not a resistor that's why uh, so they used l for inductor because they're mean and they want to trick us so this is this little cluster that we got in here and as you can see it's very very close in between there very hard to get to uh, this is mine so i just thought i'd let you know this particular cd-rom drive is mine so if i get a little bit lazy and start melting things uh, that's why um, uh, you know, I'm not wrecking other people's stuff. I'm wrecking my own stuff. But I still am going to try and get this off without melting it. Th this is uh, uh, somewhere where, what are those things called? Um, tweezers, solder tweezers would probably be very handy, but I don't have any. Um, did I, have I, have I told you lately? Smash that like button. Um, okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of aluminum here to try and do some shielding. Actually, I think the aluminum will work better over there as well. Alrighty. Okay, let's see if we can get these caps off. As you can see, you've got 100 there and 6.3V, so they're 100 microfarad, 6.3 volts. Very standard sort of size. Um, anyone here who can smell this picture, I promise you it smells just as bad as you think. 
Oh, look at that. Look at that. Come off. Thank you. <laughs> Aluminum. <clears throat> Aluminum in them. Oh, God, I managed to get it stuck back on again. Like some sort of idiot. Ah! There we go. Minimal meltage. Minimal meltage. Uh, did I manage to remove any components? Still good, still good, still good. Still good, still good, still good. That's meant to be empty. Good. I managed to... I managed to get those off without removing any other components. Let's see if I can do the same for this. <laughs> I do have a um, uh, I do have a recapping guide for this on the website recappermac.com.au. You will find a guide for this, uh, even though it's not actually Apple. But I do have a couple of non-Apple things there on on the website. I've got the CD, and I think I've got a, a, I might have a couple of Amigas there as well. I think I've got an Amiga 600 and an Amiga 1200. Uh, amongst my Mac recapping stuff. Stay. Stay. Alright. So that's it for those ones. And let's just check again. Still there. Still there, still there, still there. I mean, I generally end up removing one of these. One or more of these in this little cluster here. So, this one, or 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 this one. That one there. Ow! Ow! That one there, um, it says zero, 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 which basically means it's just a, it's a connector. It's not a resistor. Um, look at that. We're loving it? Yeah, we're loving it. Right, let's get these other ones off, shall we? Mm -hmm. Oh, there. In honor of the physicist Heinrich Lenz. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Isn't that a nice thing that we do that? Okay. Not going to worry about a heat shield here. 4747, these are 4716s. It's kind of handy that even though this isn't an Apple product, it uses all the same size caps as Apple products. So when it comes to recapping, you don't need to go and stock anything new. Other than obviously the fact that I put slightly smaller ones on this. You can do it with big ones. I have done it with big ones. It just sucks. <laughs> Alright, then we're going to do a bit of... Oh, there's still one here. Still one here. A little 10 microfarad 16 volt. Off you come, little tappy. Yay. Goodbye. So, some of these, when I work on them, they end up with some really heavy corrosion, and then you end up having to do all sorts of cleaning and stuff. To get them looking nice. Uh, this one doesn't look as bad, so I'm hoping that this will be a fairly straightforward clean, but we'll see. I mean, we'll, once we actually start cleaning, we'll, we'll discover more. Need to get myself some flux here. I am using Amtec flux because I like Amtec flux, NC559 ASMTF. That is definitely my flux of choice. Um, flux can be a very personal thing, so I won't necessarily say this is the best one for you. Um, uh, you know, I like flux that behaves in a particular way, and this one behaves the way I like it to behave. So, simple as that. I'm going to turn on my fume extractor because I've got to protect my little lungs. We're all about health and safety here, apart from all those times I burn myself and forget to turn on the fume extractor. And make it look easy. Wow. Wait until I stuff it up, then I won't. Who is it 
that likes the cleaning part. That's right, it's Trina. Trina not here with us tonight, I don't think. But uh, Trina's always talking about the uh, the cleaning part of it. It's the fun part. Not sure I agree, but, you know, each to their own. Now, I've mentioned this before about tantalum. Tantalum is a a mineral that you th that gets dug up from under the ground, mined, and it has the second highest melting point uh, of any metal on the periodic table. The highest melting point is tungsten, and the second highest, I believe, is uh, tantalum. I could be wrong on that. Tantalum is nowhere near as, um, what's the word, plentiful as tungsten. Okie dokie. This one looks like it's pretty much clean. Let's just get a little Q-tip. I upended my container of Q-tips, so they're just all over the desk at the moment. Things we call cotton buds in this country. Anyone seen any good films lately? I'm up for some recommendations. I've been watching a lot of old stuff lately because, you know, just sort of struggling to find anything decent to watch. Just clearing off a little bit of corrosion off the top of this one. I'll get some solder onto it. They've gone all American today. Aluminum and solder. Oh, you know what I did forget to do? I forgot to say hello to everyone who's watching this on replay. I always like to say hello to people that are watching this on replay. So if you're watching this after the fact, different time, hello. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this is reasonably entertaining. I know that watching a live stream after it's streamed is not necessarily as exciting, but, you know, stay tuned because I'll be saying really interesting stuff later. I can't, I really can't. I can't promise that, that's just, that's just mean. Watching Tetris tonight. Trailer looks good. Yeah, it looks interesting. So that one's on Apple TV, I think, from memory. I think it's an Apple original movie with Taron Egerton. Um, and it's, what is it? It's the, kind of the birth of the Game Boy or something, isn't it? Something like that. It, it looks, it does look interesting. I want it to be good, but, you know, wanting, you know, was it wish in one hand and shit in the other and see which one fills up first? Um... Mm, 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 mm. Okay, doing a little bit cleaning. One of my chickens is just going off at the moment. I promise it'll be the same one. It'll be that friggin' Australor that just makes a lot of noise all the time. Let's check on their feeders. Maybe the feeder's gone empty. They've got three feeders there, so the idea is if one is empty, there's still two that aren't. Latest South Park season was really good. I haven't watched South Park in such a long time. I should probably watch it because I do love those guys. I love... Um, Matt, was it Matt Stone Trey Parker? I think that's the names. I love those guys. <gasps> I'm lifting a pad. Is the chook cam still running? No, it's not. I just ended up having two. I mean, it is to some extent, as in. I have a security cam on the chooks all the time and I'm able to monitor it and all that sort of stuff. 
um, but I haven't been live streaming it. I was just having way too many technical problems. So what happens is if there's some sort of temporary network break, um, the software um, for the security software just goes, oh, there's been a break, try again. And then it would just come back online. But the streaming software, when there's a break, it just goes, there's a break, that's it. And wouldn't actually attempt to refresh it on its own. And so it just kept on going offline over and over and over and over again. And it would usually happen while I was asleep. So if people would actually come to have a look, they'd be just looking at a frozen display and just like, Ugh. can't even watch the little rats running around. And so I kind of gave up on it. Cocaine bear to if you want to just suspend your brain for 90 minutes. It's funny, I was reading a review on that the other day. They said it's not even in the so bad, it's good category. They said it's just unwatchable. So interesting. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know. When I can't watch movies, I generally watch them sort of with the missus as well. And so they sort of have to be something we're both going to like. And I think cocaine bear might be a hard sell I want to get a cap on this as fast as possible because I do not like that wobbly wobbly pad there okie dokie now this one here we don't need to worry about because there's no cap on that one um, so yeah I've got a, uh, a review coming up fairly soon of a microscope it's not a digital microscope like the one I did last time it is an optical microscope, um, and uh, it doesn't have a, I don't believe it has a camera um, port, so it's going to be interesting trying to review it if I can't show you the picture, but we'll see. I'll try, I will figure something out, because I am resourceful. <clears throat> Did I mention my friend Trevor, friend Trevor over here? So this is the Vivor 30 litre ultrasonic cleaner. You will find links in the description and you will find a 5% off discount code in there. If you're after one, not even a, a 50, uh, you might be after a 20 or a 22 or a 15 or a 10. Uh, I can highly recommend the Vivor brand. Um, so if you use the link there in the description, you will get a discount. And at the end of the day, you will also end up with a really good ultrasonic cleaner. Tremors is so bad. I love tremors, but see, I don't even see tremors as being that bad. I actually see tremors as being, you know, uh, kind of, I don't know. Tremors is quite deliberate. You know, I don't feel like tremors is an accident. Uh, you know, even down to that, the, the characters that, um, what was it? There was the country singer and the guy from Family Ties. Um, I can't remember their names, but there was those two characters living in their house where they just, they were just, you know, wall to wall firearms and they were funny, but they were meant to be funny. Um, Tremors is a great film. I've never watched any of the, the, um, sequels. I don't think I might have, might have seen Tremors too, but pretty much I'm just a, a one Tremors person. Reba McIntyre and Bert. Now, a few movies that are so bad they're good, none of them tried to do that. They were trying to be good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, one of the most classics of that, if you may never heard of it, but there's a film called Plan 9 from Outer Space, uh, made by Ed Wood. Uh, there's actually a movie on Ed Wood called Ed Wood, starring um, Captain Jack Sparrow, what's his name? Johnny Depp as Ed Wood. It's interesting... Um, but yeah, Plan 9 from Outer Space was, was one where he was, he was actually trying to make serious, serious, a serious movie, and it's just a comedic mess. Um, there are a few so bad it's good movies out there that I, you know, I like to watch from time to time. You've got to be in the right mood, though, and I think you need to be fairly well lubricated as well, though. Um... Meg, the Meg. Is the Meg like that? Has anyone watched that? I've got the Meg. I've never actually got around to watching it. 
But when I saw the shorts for it, I thought, oh, that sh that could be a So Bad It's Good movie. Oh, because the one with the Sharknado, that was a So Bad It's Good movie, wasn't it? I've never seen that. I'd like to watch it, but I, I just, I'd have to watch it on my own, because I absolutely cannot get the missus enthused about that one. I'm like, you want to watch Sharknado? No. It's apparently funny. No. So that's a Bruce watch on his own movie. And to be honest, any anytime I have enough time to watch a movie, I'm usually doing something like this. Uh, 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 uh. It's just bad. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. <clears throat> I've been um, sourcing some movies that were of some sort of historical significance to me growing up. Uh, when I was young, my primary desire for a career, my main career choice was to work in film or television special effects. And I used to buy this magazine called Cinefix. And I loved it. Absolutely loved that magazine. Um, where they would go and explain how special effects were done for particular movies. Now, I have to confess that it's not as interesting to find out about now. Because it's all just like, well, we punched it into a computer. And then one of our talented animators and compositors made it look nice. Um... In the olden days, when you're doing all that practical effects stuff, you know, that's really interesting to watch. Deep Blue Sea. See, I don't know Deep Blue Sea. wanted to be Adam Savage or Jim Heineman. Yeah, I, I mean, Jamie, Jamie, sorry. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I guess probably because they did work primarily in practical effects. So for them, it was all about the engineering side of it. That is probably what I would have wanted to end up doing. Um, you know, that, that sort of, that practical effects side of things, you know, making stuff, you know, move on its own or whatever, whatever is actually called for. Um, Stop motion animation, I was really into that. So, big Ray Harryhausen fan. Um, and other stop motion animators, people like, I mean, the, the, the hat kind of got passed on. So, it was like, Ray Harryhausen taught Jim Danforth, and I think Jim Danforth then in turn taught Phil Tippett, something like that. But anyhow, or they all just organically learned it, whatever. But... Uh, and of course, Ray Harryhausen learned from Willis O'Brien. So, um, yeah, um, it's definitely um, that was that was really what I was keen on: stop motion animation. Which, of course, we still see today. But then, having said that, I suspect that as time has gone on, I probably lack the patience for that sort of thing now. The stop motion is so time consuming. Makes it a lot easier with modern technology though when you're doing stop motion because you can just have a, if you're doing stop motion like even on a phone, you can then look at an overlay of the last frame when you're doing the next frame. It's mega cool. So cool. Uh, Garth is here. Hello there, Garth. CD ROM indeed. Max is here. Um, not working on your board today, Max, sorry. I am going to be working on yours, particularly the 2FX. I've got, what I've got left of yours is a 2SI and a 2FX. But I want to probably do the 2FX with a little bit of advanced warning and feature it because people love watching FX live streams. So I want to make sure I've got, I've got, you know, I set it up at a time where I can get maximum people watching and, and then I get plenty of warning out there that it's coming on so that people are all tuned in to watch it 
Everyone just loves the two FX. Everyone. Oh, God. And I've got to get Kai's FX back to him as well. I did, um, I did quite a few stop motion films at the time on Super 8. I used to use Super 8 uh, film. Um, well, we're sort of pretty much all cleaned up here. I now just need to stick some new caps on. This is happening really quickly. Really quickly. Uh, now, will I need a recapping guide? Will I need a recapping guide or will I remember? You know I'm not going to remember. And I know that these are all 10, sorry, hundreds here. Where's my recapping guides? I'll lose them all the time. Recapping guides! I mean, it's a big book. Bet you it's under all that shit. Alright, lucky there's a website. Do... One of the things I have to do with this computer is I need to open it up and clean some dust out because it's running damn hot at the moment. Recap a mark. Resources. Resources. CD. Apple CD 300. Okay, there we go. We've got ourselves a picture. So, those four, they're all 100 microfarad 6.3 volt, which is what I thought, but got to be sure, because, you know... Yeah, so this is, this, basically, it's the ones that leak. <laughs> um, the, it's probably not mentioned enough, because people are obviously recapping boards and stuff like that. Um, but we do have to remember that that anything with a surface mount electric, electric, electric anything with those little cans on it um, is going to eventually leak, and so we're having to look at CD ROM drives and even floppy drives. Um, the um, what do you call them? The manual inject floppy drives that came out later on in some of like the Power Max and stuff like that. Um, they're probably from about, I don't know, 610 onwards, something like that, the Quadra 610. Um, they had these manual inject floppy drives and they, some of them had tantalum caps on them, but some of them had surface mount electrolytics on the back. And so you've got to recap them. So you've got to recap your logic board, your power supply, your CD-ROM drive and your floppy drive. I mean, it's crazy. Bloody cheap PCBs. Yes, indeed. These are rubbish. These are absolute rubbish. Rubbish. All right, let's get our caps. So I'm going to start off with these 10 microfarads. I'm sorry, 100 microfarads, because they're a bit of a poo to put on. One, two. Four, five. Actually, no, I think I missed something there. Um, all right. Let's get some goo on this. I'm going to put about a half Rossman on there. I was just, just thinking to myself, you know, um, I used to watch Lewis Rossman all the time, watching him repair stuff. And, um, oh crap, which way around? Positive. Yep. Um, and... He just does so many videos now where he is just talking, just talking to camera. And I sort of think, uh, and he gets heaps of people watching it. Should I be doing that? Should I just be sitting there in front of the camera talking about stuff? I don't know. I mean, I don't want to. It seems to me the most boring thing in the world. I can't stand it. But he just gets so many people watching him. 
Alrighty, capacitor, solder, now I've got a bit of an idea, I, I, I'd be interested in what people's opinions are on this. So I relatively recently found out that the Quadra 650, Centra 650, 650, they're effectively the same I believe, they're both um, the full 040 chips, though there are apparently were some 650s that came out with an LC 040, but you know. So I've recently found out, um, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I mean, these rants are a bit there, yeah, but but people watching, hoping for something useful to fly out of his mouth only to leave disappointed. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I don't really share a lot of his political views, so when he does start talking politics, I'm not really on the same page. And I also feel like he, certainly with some of the stuff he talks about, I'm not talking about his right to repair or anything like that. I mean, that's wonderful work that he's doing. But when he's talking about some other stuff, I feel like he comes at things in a fairly kind of, in, in a fairly ignorant sort of way. He sort of made up his mind about certain things but you you listen to him and you think, well, you haven't really taken this into account or that into account. And I guess that probably just comes because he's he's a lot younger than I am. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, when you're doing a live stream like I am now, uh, you can just say what you want, really. I mean, people can sit there and object to it in the chat, but you can just ignore that. So you sort of, I don't know, I... I'm ranting a little bit here, but I just sort of feel like, I mean, what do you end up with? You just end up with a whole group of people that agree with you, I suppose. Uh, we're fixing stuff. That's important. Yeah, so anyway, I was just starting to tell a story and then I stopped myself. Um, I found out recently that the Quadra 650 is a straight swap for a Quadra 700 in terms of the board, the I.O., everything. It's, everything's in the same position. So you can actually take a 650 board and drop it into a 700 case. Now, here's the thing. I have a spare 700 case because I have a... Quadra 700 board that is rooted. Um, and I'm sort of thinking, would it be fun to get that 650 in there and have and have a Quadra 650 in a 700 case? I mean, I've got a working 700, so I could actually have two Quadra 700s, then I could put some great big 21-inch monitors on them, and then I can go and recreate the scene from Jurassic Park, and I'll I'll uh, I'll stand, I'll be Nedry there going. I'm totally unappreciated in my time. You know, someone who can debug a million lines of code <clears throat> for what I bid. Like to see you try. Uh, uh, uh. What, you didn't use the magic word or whatever he says. I can't remember what he says in that movie. Yay. <coughs> Quadra 700 case deserves an MDD board. I think you might struggle with that. Uh, now, of course, the downside to me putting a 650 board into a 700 case, I lose the CD-ROM drive. But how important is the CD-ROM drive? That's the question. And I mean, I think not is the answer to that, but, you know, some people might disagree with me. Is it more important to have a, what, we, it'll be effectively a functional Quadra 700, is that more important than having a CD-ROM drive? Volt. Let's get those little suckers in here. 10 microfarad 16 volt. 
With these ones, I buy little teensy wincy ones because I just find them a lot easier to solder. I used to buy slightly bigger ones and they went on fine. But then these, these, these ones were just like, well, this is just easier. So I approve. You see the little guy? Hello, little guy. With the 106 written on it. And I do, I just mention this every now and again in my videos, just as a little refresher for folks. 10, the six means six zeros, so it's one with seven zeros after it which gives you 10 million picofarads, which equals 10 microfarads. Oh, I've got the thing up here and I can't see the chat. Justin, do you want to ask your question in here? You might get some, I need a resistance measurement on any of those boards. Oh. I'm seeing new tech replacing the old on these boards, indeed. Um, I have had some people when they've asked me to recap to replace them with uh, surface mount electrolytic. Um, they want to preserve the look of them for me i'm just more about making sure that these things work so i don't really mind if they don't look exactly the same as they did when they came out of the factory i'm making spaghetti bolognese for dinner tonight and i just want everyone to know I don't care what you say, mine's the best in the world. Yes, the best in the world. You heard me correctly. Uh, and then we have 347 microfarad 16 volt. One of the things that I love about the 650, without a doubt, and same with the 700 for this matter, is that it has tantalum caps no surface matte electrolytic caps on it um, one thing i really did want to say to people now uh i guess you know this isn't necessarily news that people want to hear but um matte classics are a real problem uh pretty much every matte classic that comes my way these days is a day-long job to get it working, at least something like that. Um, so I'm, I, I have kind of two options with that. I can either say to people, I will recap it and I'll charge you for recapping it, and then you just take your chances. If it doesn't work afterwards, tough. Um, or virtually just not taking them at all because they have become such a problematic computer to work on. Um, anyone who's wanting to get a 68k, um, you know, 68000 compact Mac, I would generally say to people these days, just hunt down an SE. Um, you'll have a lot less trouble. And some people might be like, oh, that's a really awful attitude to have. But, you know, I guess I'm probably just a really awful guy. Now, I mean, I just, I don't, I just don't, uh, I, Mac Classics are just giving me so much grief. It's virtually to the point where if I keep doing Classics, I will probably just never recap again. I'll just be like, no, not doing it, leaving it. I'm going to go live on an island somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
And if you get a classic that needs the works, you've got to recap the logic board, clean it obviously. Might need a little bit of trace repair. Uh, the analog board, you've got to replace a lot of caps on that there, or you know, replace most of the caps on there. Then you've got to clean it, and then a lot of the time you need a lot of trace repair because a lot of the time those leaky caps do some pretty hardcore damage. Uh, and then there are usually other problems related, like they just restart themselves all the time, and then you get wobbles in the screen. So then you've got other components you've got to replace on them. Just don't like them. The gears break. Yes. So what do people do with these dinosaurs? That's a really good question. It's actually, it's a question that gets asked a lot of the time. Why, you know, what do you do with a vintage computer? Well, you do exactly what you did with, the, with those computers when they were new. Um, you use the software that was on them, and most of the time it comes from nostalgia. It's very hard for me to kind of describe this, but the feeling that I get when I sit in front of a compact Mac with the 512, by 342 monochrome display the feeling that i get in just you know like warm fuzzies that i get from a just a nostalgic point of view uh sitting there and playing a, an old black and white game on the thing or something like that i i love using them i love having them sitting in front of me and you can use whatever software was around at the time um they uh can still be functional um it helps if you have a network card in a lot of them these days because uh, then even you can just connect with FTP if you want to transfer stuff around from your old to the new. I mean, I know you've got other solutions like Blue Scuzzy for transferring things around, but I do find uh, Blue Scuzzy transferring stuff on the card and stuff like that can get a bit clunky. Uh-oh. What's Jay saying about me now? Jay's just sent a text and it has my name in it. Oh, I'm going to have to find out what that is. He sent a video or something like that. <clears throat> and he's probably mocking me. Is Jay mocking me? Um, okay, that's it. It's recapped. Um, that last one was a little bit tricky because uh, it was a little bit hard to get to that soldering pad, but I got to it, and it's all good. Um, and uh, yeah, everything's uh, everything's fine. Computers were simpler back then. Good learning opportunity. Yes, I would agree with that as well. You know, it's, it's funny when I used to, um, you know, in when I used to get into computers originally there was kind of like an understanding that everyone had about okay you, you had the cpu and then you have the rams the random access memory and then you have mass storage like a floppy disk or a hard drive and you know we did all of that kind of stuff and none of that seems to i don't know if any of that gets taught anymore i know the number of times that people say hey my computer's running out of memory and you go um are you running out of space on your hard drive? Like, yeah, yeah, I can't fit anything on there. I'm running out of memory. And I sort of think to myself, we did, when we were younger, we had a particular language that we understood that meant that, you know, you didn't, if you said something like that, people would understand what you were saying without having to clarify it. Uh, mocking all the way, Mr. Rhodes. What, what has Rode done now? Is, is my microphone stuffing up or something like that? Is that what's happening? Is my audio going to crap? Is, it, is that it? Um, I will say that I, I use pretty much exclusively Rode microphones. Um, and I there's only one thing that I do... Well, I shouldn't say that. There are a couple of things. First of all, this wireless microphone setup that I have, one thing that I find really annoying about it and I hope they fix this maybe in the future. This is the receiver. I'm just gonna change cameras here for a sec. This is the receiver for the microphone you're hearing now. And if I press this button, you'll see, you can see it there. There's a little meter there showing my voice. Blah, blah, blah. 
Now it has the ability to capture two microphones, but I'm only using one at the moment. It's the one there on the left. It has this cute little screen and that's great. Now on the bottom here, this is a clip which you can clip onto something or you can actually slide that on to the shoe of a camera. That's the same width as a shoe. So you can slide it onto the camera, but the problem is that the screen's on the top. So when I have that on a camera and my camera's up on a tripod, I can't see the freaking screen. That screen needs to be here so that when you slide it onto the shoe, you can look at it from the back of the camera. So that to me is one real design flaw on this. Um, and then the other issue that I have with these is that the microphones that you get for them, these lavalier mics, although not expensive, they have a real weak point here. Um, after you know, a bit of use, you, you end up getting crackles around the That's why this is wrapped up in tape to try and keep that still so that we don't get the crackles. I think I just got crackles. Boof, boof, because I just saw it go into the red there. So that that is a, a, a huge issue that this microphone still works. Oh dear. Look at that. That's not good. That might be the problem. Okay. Sorry. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a different microphone. <laughs> I didn't realize just how bad this one was. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all those crackles and noise and awfulness. I'll be right back. I'm going to mute. I'm going to go get a different microphone and I'll be right back. So. My apologies, sit tight, back soon. And back soon. Okay, testing one, two, three. Uh, let's hope that that is the end of the crackle. I am gonna to have to throw that other microphone away because it is stuffed. Uh, uh. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the, uh, this beautiful microphone. I must have, oof, I must have yanked this or something. Uh, something bad. That's not what you want on an audio cable. Definitely not. So uh, I'm not sure I can necessarily blame Rode for that other than maybe saying that their cable could be a little bit more durable. Um, yeah. Mm. That's a shame, that's a shame because that one's not that old. Um, poo. All right, now, uh, next thing that I think I might do... <laughs> now, you know, I, I'm almost certain I know what happened to it. Um, I sometimes, when I'm walking along, if, if the loop of the cable is hanging out, I sometimes get it caught on things, and then it gets a yank, and I suspect that's what's ended up happening. Um, yeah, I'm not going to fix that. There's no way that I'll be able to fix that and make that 
you know, particularly usable. I, I, I don't quite know what to do about it because the those micro these little lapel microphones, which are designed to be small, they do end up wearing out quite quickly. Um, I have three. Um, technically, I have two now because I'm never going to use that one again. Um, yeah, so I'll probably have to buy another one. Or look to another brand because it doesn't have to be uh, a Rode Lavalier microphone being plugged into that. They have a much more expensive one and the more expensive one you can actually replace the cables. So, you know, if you end up having a problem, you can replace the cables. Um, right, now, what are we going to do now? Um, I want to... How long have I been going for? I've been going for just over an hour. Um, this needs to be ultrasonically clean before I can kind of test it out. And to be honest, testing a CD-ROM drive is just about the most boring thing I can think of. So I'm not even sure I'm really going to bother with that. I will, um, I'll clean it and that. Um, we have got a few things that we can look at. I have got this Macintosh uh, uh, 2SI board. It was sent to me by Max, who might still be in the chat, Max Button. And we're going to have a look at it and see if it is salvageable. Um, <laughs> um, it's in pretty poor condition, so we'll just see. Now, I, I, it's up, it's, it's, I am going to have to do the back soon thing again, so my apologies. Um, I'll be back. Oh, Apple's Anonymous is here. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, and Dana is here too. Okay, um, all right, so just give me a second. Uh, it's just up there. It'll only take me about 20 seconds, but I'm just going to grab this 2SI board and we'll have a bit of a look and see if it's even worth looking at. So back in a second. hurt my knee, ouchie. Uh, righty. <sighs> now, okay, so let's uh, let's keep keep on going um, because, well, I mean, I usually like to do these streams for around about two hours and I'm about 40 minutes shy of that, 45 minutes shy. So this is a 2SI board, as I say, sent to me by Max Button. Uh, it has suffered from some pretty bad corrosion but not from the battery uh, just possibly from the way it was stored and who knows it might actually work but we'll just have to see now there is a slight issue here and that is we've got these two components here well there's meant to be four of them so oh I've got a super chat and put down thank you Falcor Thank you very much for your super chat. So, this came with this component here, which is one of the spares. Now, I do have spares of these. I've got lots of 2SI spare boards, so that's okay. But we just want to have a look at the rest of it under the microscope. We'll just see whether this is something that might actually work if we throw some power at it. And we need to recap it, of course. One, two, three, four, five. Ouch, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, the main reason why... Um, Max sent this to me is because I've got another one of his 2SI boards that's not working. And, um, yeah, and the hope was that maybe we can use this one instead. This one is in much worse condition than the other one, but the other one does have some sort of connection issue with the ROMs. So, um, but anyhow, well, let's have a little look and we'll just see what we can see. I'll start off around that region where that component fell off and just see why it fell off. What, 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 what's, what was its motivation? Right. So. Yeah, look at that. So we've got all this crustiness here. 
Let's have a look. Oh, excuse me. A lot of crustiness, but sort of intact. Largely intact. So, I don't know. Let's see if we can actually find some pads under here that we might be able to solder to. Have a look at that. Well, how about that? Stuck in a chimbley. Oh, because sometimes that scrapey noise gets right at me. Two SI reloaded is on the horizon. <laughs> so this is just a four layer board, is it Kai? I mean, even with all that crustiness, not a single broken trace here. Impressive. <laughs> Maybe a six layer, okay, cool. Yeah, so we just need, wouldn't it wouldn't be good if Sprint did six. Wouldn't it be useful for us? All right. Um, okay, so let's clean up these pads so that we can actually put a component on here. Because we know at the very least we're gonna need these components on here. I don't know what these are. They're maybe like Mux chips or something. Something like that. I know someone like Kai would probably be able to look at them and tell me what they are just by looking at them. You just look at them. Which will be C2. I did, I did, thank you very much. Um, I got I got your envelope uh, and it was uh, some little brochures, so thank you for that. Um, I will probably scan them and so that Steve can archive them. Um, so thank you for sending that to me. I am uh, uh, there was a G5 one in there which I quite like because I actually bought one of those G5s that was being advertised in that brochure back in 2003. <laughs> Oops, I'm getting smoke on my face. Bus transceivers, okay. Bus transceivers. These are cruddy. Very cruddy, very cruddy. Oopsie. You did miss the CD-ROM bit. It's done. It's recapped. It uh, just needs to be cleaned, and then I'll test it out. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Um, so now onto a 2SI board. Um, th this is a funny one because I've got another SI board which is in far better condition but doesn't work. Now, of course, the plan is to fix the other one. I'm not going to just abandon it, but 
Uh, this one was sent to me because it looked well, this one might just work. You don't need to worry about repairing that other one. Max must have a lot of 2SIs. I've recapped, I think, at least three, at least three 2SI boards for Max. So I'm, I'm guessing that he has a lot of them. I'm pretty much only recapping by arrangement these days. Um, I am unable to provide recapping services in what I would consider to be a timely fashion. Uh, and that is mainly because a lot of the recapping I was doing before during, you know, sort of COVID and pre-COVID and all that sort of stuff, I didn't have as much work as I have now. So Rewind mechanism. Um, basically the caddy was just, uh, the old, uh, um, leaky caps, just had to replace those. There was nothing particularly challenging about it. There's not that many caps on there, so it's not even a particularly big recapping job. Um, you can, of course, rewatch it later on, um, but you can't ask questions about it later on. Well, you can actually, you can put them in the comments, but they might take me a little bit longer to answer. Not comments, yeah. Not comments. Yeah, comments. Get comments and chat mixed up. Okay, now let's see if this component can be savaged. Needs a sim socket to replace and some trace repair. Oh god, sim sockets. You said the you said the word. Kai, you said the word sim sockets. That's that's like one of the most awful jobs you can ever do. I mean, I feel like I need to do it for you. I, I, given all of the incredible level of generosity that you have shown me, I think it would be very, very rude of me not to. So I will, I will do it. Um, but I will swear a lot while I'm doing it. I'm just letting you know that. I'll be saying Dagnabbit and Consarnet and Criminy. I mean, I generally, I have started just swearing in my streams now. I stopped caring as much, you know. I mean, I'm not going to say anything really offensive. Um, but, you know, the way it is with YouTube, you either produce something for children or it's assumed you are producing something for adults. Now, this is definitely not a stream for children. I mean, I cannot imagine any children being interested in this. But I could be wrong, but who knows. Um... And so, as a result, it's, if it's not a children's stream, then it's an adult stream. So it's like, well, if it's an adult stream, I may as well swear. <laughs> I do actually have the ability to uh, grab slightly better uh, one of these, but if I can salvage this one, I will. Oh, I should mention, uh, I didn't really tag this as a Marchintosh stream for any of the Marchintosh peeps, and I didn't because it's not March here anymore, it's April. I know it is there still. But it's not here. April Tosh. Damn, these are bad. These are bad. Not even sure if I'm going to be able to get solder to stick to these. Do a PowerBook 165? No. If there is one thing I've learned from working on uh, Vintage Macs is don't work on laptops. Just don't. Doesn't matter what people ask you, just don't. Don't work on laptops. They suck. 
They'll send you to an early grave. I got a... I started off collecting laptops because I was like, oh, this is cool. I can collect these things and it'll, you know, I don't need much space. And no, bad idea. Bad, bad idea. Um, because they're so freaking temperamental. I mean, I had this PowerBook 180 that had like a line on the screen. I'm like, okay, let's see if we can sort that out. Open it up, have a look inside. Check out a few things. This might be a cable, whatever. Yeah. Put it back together, never worked again. Never worked again. Okay. Just using some sandpaper here. There's a black and white 182, by the way, it's not the color one. I mean, I have lots and lots of laptops of the later era. So I've got like G3 laptops, G4 laptops, iBooks, that sort of stuff. But if we're talking about like 040, are the only one, or 030, uh, or 000, um, oh. um, the only, the oldest one I probably have that's functional would be a 540. Um, I love the 540. It's probably, probably my favourite laptop in the whole wide world. This is a nail file, by the way, that I've got here. It's one of these things that you use to, um, well, not you, uh, people so use to file the nails. And the idea is that you start off, you start off doing the rough bit. It's, it's for this part of the nails, not that part. You start off doing the rough bit and then you get smoother and smoother and then you eventually can make your nails have a sheen like like looking in a mirror and i just find these quite good so i have a few of these uh, and if you have a look when we look at this now under the microscope you'll see that these pins will probably look quite shiny now see look at the app they're not bad at all I've gone to significant lengths to keep this component working. Uh, now I'm going to do the other thing that I do sometimes. The other thing, here's the other thing. Get a bunch of solder on the end of my iron. I hold this down with tweezers because if I don't use tweezers I will burn my fingers. Michael's Workshop, hello there. Recapping and mannequins. <laughs> Uh, hello there, VHS. Okay, that's good. It cleaned up quite nice, don't you reckon? Joe is here. Hello there, Joe. Glad to see uh, Steve from Mac84 here with us today because he's been hanging around with his famous friends lately. And so, you know, we don't get to see much of him anymore. He's uh, been hanging out with that Duke Miami guy. Um ultra mega famous youtuber and we just we just don't cut it anymore
multiple tornado warnings, that's no good. That's not what you want. It's actually been getting very, very cool here lately. Well, for me, anyway, I love the warm weather. So, it's been a bit... Ow, ow, hot. I've been a little bit disappointed with the weather lately. It's getting that definite autumn-y feel about it. And I'm, I, know, I don't welcome that. Because, or as the Americans say, fall. Um, I don't like winter. I don't like fall. I like spring. I like summer. Uh, we had a pretty pathetic summer until the very end, just at the very tail end of it and at the beginning of uh, autumn we got a few really hot days which was nice and that's because the La Nina weather system is starting to dissipate so we are likely to have a hot summer um, at the end of this year okay what what why don't you stay down you thing Two degrees? No, no, no. I assume that's in the Celsius. That's cold. That's way too cold. It's too cold for anything. Can't be having that. Oh, that was a hard one. I'd hate to live in a really cold climate. I know some people like it, and that's fine. It's me. I mean, you know, I've been raised in a hot climate, so... Or warm. So that's what I'm used to. Geez, these, uh, these pins aren't sticking down too well, are they? Oh, you can't see. Far out. I really feel like I'm flogging a dead horse here. Yeah, might work though. You never know. Javier's here, hello there. All the electronic projects get done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess one of the advantages I have here when it's cooler, it's a lot easier for me to warm up in here than it is to cool down. In this shed, that is. Well, it's stuck down, but I don't feel like it's done particularly well. Um, yeah, what are you going to do? I wonder if any of these ram duvalakis will just come off. Yeah. Okay, now this one is stuffed. Let's clean this up. I will, of course, have to source a replacement for this, but I'm pretty sure I've got a 2SI board up there I can just grab from.
Right, now I am going to stick like about three Rossmans of flux on this thing now. Jay is a big fan of snow. He really likes his snow, that's for sure. We all know that Jay is a little nutty, though. Oh, that's rain. The rain's precipitation falling from the sky here. It's only light, but it made a noise. Right, using a little bit of solder wick now. I'm using it to not only soak up the solder, but I'm also using it as an abrasive to do a bit of scrapey, scrapey here. Get some of this bad stuff off. Has anyone here in the chat seen the movie Moonfall? Just curious. It was bad good. Okay, so... I'm thinking about watching it. I mean, it's Roland Emmerich, so we know what to expect to some extent. Think I'm gonna need a new blade soon. Feel like this one's getting really bad. Anyone seen Real Genius? Oh yeah. Oh yes, Siri, I have. I am old enough. I am old enough to remember when that first came out. I am old enough to remember hiring that on VHS from the video shop. And I have recently watched it in high D, high def, high definition, HD, 1080p, um, which of course I never saw. I only ever have only ever seen it on VHS. And so seeing it in 1080p was quite something else. It's like, gosh. It had potential, that movie. There's some good things about it. Um, I felt like Val Kilmer overacted the crap out of it, though. Has anyone seen Moonraker? Yes, who hasn't seen Moonraker? Come on. Come on, it's a James Bond. Everyone's seen Moonraker. <clears throat> <laughs> Ooh, 
Moonraker was uh, Roger Moore, wasn't it? I think, if if uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, right, so uh, going on a hunt for a two SI board. That looks a bit two SI. Yeah, that's a two SI. Oh, and they're all there. What the hell? Why on earth did I bother with that other one? These ones are so good. These ones are in beautiful condition. That other one's coming off. Bugger that. Look at them. Look how pretty they are. Well, that one is anyway. And that one. So we're just going to replace these. <clears throat> Never saw Moonraker. Well, Jay, you call yourself a James Bond fan. Moonraker was actually, I think it was a rehash of one of the previously done stories. I, I could be wrong, but one of them they did twice. Or was that Never Say Never Again? I can't remember. But I, I'm pretty sure they redid one of the James Bond stories that had already been turned into a movie. Thunderball, yeah, that's it. Right, so I just grab these two. So I just don't really see any point in uh, bothering with that really bad one that doesn't even seem to be adhering properly when I've got nice, pretty clean ones here. Just not worth it. Which was okay. So Thunderball redone as Never Say Never Again. Yeah, because they brought they brought um, Connery back after Roger Moore. But before it wasn't Pierce Brosnan. It was Timothy Dalton, wasn't it? Timothy Dalton first. Let's just say the Bond franchise was going through some issues at that time. Like really bad writing. Am I going to do this lazy? I'm doing it. I did it lazy. I did it really badly too. There we go. There we go. <sighs> Kai, thank you for hanging around so late. I do appreciate it. Um, so uh, I'm sorry that you won't necessarily get to see the end of this, but if it's any consolation, I suspect it will be a bit of a no-show. Um, I, I think the chances of this working are very, very slim. So, expectations set. But thank you very much for joining. I do appreciate it. Always makes me feel... Uh, I was going to say it makes me feel smart when Kai's around, but that's not actually the case. It's the exact opposite effect. <laughs> 
I hope some of the smarts rub off on me. I think that's the main thing that I'm always looking for. Just one ping, please. I love Hunt for Red October. I find that a very entertaining film. I can just watch it any time. Comes on TV. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to watch this. I think um, I would argue that at a certain point with the Bond films, they became very sort of focused on kind of making them, I guess, kids' films to some extent. I felt like the Roger Moore films were designed to be more watched by children. Uh, they've gone the other way, of course, with the Bond now. They're definitely making them so that you would not be showing them to youngsters because of all the violence. Uh. Hey, come on, you missed a really important actor. You can't sit there and mention Alec Baldwin, Tim Curry, and Sean Connery without mentioning Sam Neill. We've got to mention, we have to, on this channel, always mention either the Australians or the New Zealanders. So, Sam Neill needs to get a special mention. Now, uh, do I just test this? Or should I recap it first? Um... What do people think? Just fire it up, see what it does. I mean, is that a stupid thing to do? Italian guy from Gladiator. Italian guy from Gladiator. Italian guy from Gladiator. All right, come on, people. I need your feedback. Are we testing this? Are we just going to test it, or do you want me to recap it first? What you thinking? Fire up. There we go. Good on you, Jay. <clears throat> so, uh, all I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to... I, I haven't even got a screen down here, so we can't do it that way. But what I do have is I've got nothing. I've got nothing here at all. Um, what do I do? What do I do? I've got a blue SCSI here. It won't boot from this though, because I think the card on it is rooted. Not blue SCSI, this is SCSI to SD. Uh, but we can at least see if it's getting some power. So then within, 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 then, then we'll get this. Then, then, then. Which model CD drive is this? Well, I've actually moved on. The CD drive is done, so we've had to move on to something else. And this is a 2SI, and I need to change to the top view here. There we go, like that. So we're going to just see, first of all, if we get any light on this. So if we've got power running through it. <laughs> um, 
connect that there, and then we're ready. Three, two, one. I'm going to stand back a bit because there are a lot of old caps on this. Three, two, one. Okay, well, we've got a light on the SCSI, so there's power coming through. Um, is, I haven't, this has got one meg of RAM on board? Yeah, one meg of RAM on board. So it can actually start up without RAM. So, oh, look, that's, that's enough for me to get a, uh, get a screen and see what it does. Um, so I'm going to go get a screen and uh, see what it does. Okay. All right, so, Italian guy, Eric Banner? No. He wasn't in that, was he? Unless we're talking about a different movie. All right, okay, so, uh, it'll only take me a second. The screen is just up in the house, uh, so just bear with me uh, a few moments and I will be right back. Uh, let's press the back soon. One, two, three. That was an odd one. That was a very odd one. Um, weird. It's not a good ad for road today, is it? <laughs> yeah, okay, so. Um, now, what I was just saying before, and I'll say again, is uh, I don't really expect this to work. Um, I expect that we might get a white screen and probably no more than that. You know, we'll just see what happens. So, got my screen plugged in now. I've got my Zulu SCSI RP2040 on there. Uh, so, sit tight. Sit tight. 
Hello from Emily and Sam in Birmingham, Alabama, USA. Hello to Sam and Emily. And ready, we're about to try out this 2SI, which we think will probably not work. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm getting a video signal. Oh. This is the white screen that I was talking about before, which the all too familiar white screen, which then doesn't go anywhere, which means that it's basically not getting the information from the ROMs. It's a very, very common problem on this particular computer. Now, having said this, this is dirty and covered in muck. And I wonder whether a decent clean might actually see us through that one. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's try a different ROM in it, shall we? Just for fun, because why not? Because why not? Oh, come on, you stupid thing, where are you? I've got, they're, they're everywhere, it's everywhere. Things are everywhere. Come on, thing. There is a ROM. There's a ROM. Uh, Satanic Mac Club. Let's pop him in there. And then I need a jumper. No, no, I'm not cold. I need a jumper shunt, is what I need. And I know I have some here in this fifth container down. Or is it sixth container? No, it's the seventh container down where I keep my jumper shunts. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Chaos, world in crisis. Here we go. Yeah. Here's a little black jumper shunt. Jumper jump. And let's pop that on there. That'll make it start from the uh, other ROM, theoretically. I don't know it'll make any difference, but we'll try. And ping. I have to admit, I didn't even think I was going to get this far. Zulus. Thousands of them. Um, okay. All right. Well, we're getting power to the board. Um, some good things are happening. Uh, some not so good things are happening. Um, of course, the board has not been recapped, so, you know, it could be that. The board hasn't been cleaned. It could be that. So the CPU is getting some warmth, so that's good. And we pop this over here on the shelf that's not there. And pop that over there. I'm going to have a little look at this under the microscope. I want to have a look at how things like the CPU and the ROMs look here. Scope view, scope view, there we go. How do I look half bad? See, look at that. That component's about to fall off. That little guy there. So, we're going for around about two hours now. What, what is the request? Shall I recap it and we see if it fixes it? Crap. Or should I just stop streaming? I can't really do much at the moment because my wife has the car, so I can't go anywhere. So I may as well just recap it, eh? I've got a sneaking suspicion that when I put this in the ultrasonic cleaner for a really decent clean, that some components are going to fall off. But, you know, better now than sending it back to the customer 
and then having it not work later on. I mean, for all of the nastiness here, it's actually, it's really not that bad. I mean, come on. Yeah, we're recapping it. Yep, recap the board. This is the important thing. I have to admit, I saw something on YouTube the other day which made me a little bit angry. Um, I won't mention any names, but you guys might be able to figure it out. Um, someone posted a picture of a 2VX logic board, a 2VX that they'd managed to score. And I, I actually commented, I said, look, you know, Great score, 2VX is a, a nice collectible. A lot of the time you can pick them up very cheap or free. Um, I mean, the last 2VX that I got hold of, I think I paid 60 bucks for something like that. And, uh, you know, they're, if you're trying to get into collecting Max, you probably still can find 2VXs and 2VIs out there for not too much money. So, um, I, you know, I said, look, really good score. And of course he got with the Caddy CD-ROM drive as well. So, you know, I mean, if you get the 2VX that didn't have the CD, you get that front bezel with no hole in it. Hole in it. So even if you get a CD-ROM drive, unless you can get that bezel at the front as well, you, you can't put the CD-ROM drive in there and have it look any good. So to get one with the CD-ROM drive in there and the CD bezel, I was like, great score, well done. But what I also noticed on the, on the logic board is I noticed uh, the very noticeable smearing that you get like in particular when you have a dusty board if you've got a board that's got a coating of dust on it you end up with these dark areas around where the capacitors are because the, the gunge leaks out into the um uh into the dust and then it makes that area darker and i said look don't leave it too late you've got cap leakage there that's the only really ultimately the warning i want to give people don't leave it too late i just see too many boards come across this desk where people have left it too late and it is going to cost a lot more money or the thing is not repairable. So I said that. And the guy basically came back and said, yeah, look, this is, um, this is a, a project that I'm going to be working on. I'm working on this at the moment that I'm going to be working on on this 2VX next to get it all fixed up. It's like, good, no, it's like awesome. That's, you know, have fun. It's a, it's a good fun computer to restore. So, you know, have fun with that. Then um, a few minutes later, um, someone left a post in there saying, um, I'm going to recap it for you. Contact me to recap it. And I got frustrated by that because that person had not read anything that had been said. I mean, if he'd have read it, he would know that the person was actually going to be doing it, recapping it themselves, which is great. You know, you know this is my, what I talk about on my channel this is what I encourage I encourage people to give this stuff a try to learn these skills to get good at the restorations all that sort of stuff so I, I got a bit annoyed that this person had just gone straight into the advertising their services mode without even bothering to read some of the other comments where the person who did the post actually said they were going to be doing it themselves and that 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 annoyed me Um, but then again, you know, I'm very touchy, very touchy. I recapped one of these just the other day. My last live stream was recapping a 2SI, so in case you're watching this and you're feeling, feeling like it's a bit of deja vu, I'll go in and say exactly the same things as I said when I recapped the other one. I had to order some caps. After doing the last 2SI board that I did, I had one capacitor left in my little container, so I went and did a big order the other day, 200 and something dollars, uh, and I bought a whole stack of uh, surface mount electrolytic, oh sorry, surface mount tantalum caps. So yeah, feeling pretty good, feeling all stocked up again. One thing I will say is when you buy 100 capacitors and then you put them in a little container, it doesn't look like 100. I asked 
chat GPT the other day about the 2SI and it made a mistake. I said to chat, chat GPT, I said, Mr. Chat GPT, what was special about the Macintosh 2SI? And it gave a few correct answers and then it actually said, uh, it was a significant upgrade. The, uh, it had a 68030 CPU, which was a significant update uh, from the 68802 CPU found in the Macintosh 2CI. And I'm like, that is so not right, <laughs> Mr. GPT. If you have any chance of taking over the world and becoming Skynet, you're going to need to learn your vintage Macs better. I, I actually used Chat, Chat GPT for a proposal I had to write the other day, and I didn't just say, hey, Chat GPT, write me a proposal. Um, there were a couple of times where I needed to, in the proposals, sort of demonstrate reasoning for doing certain things. And I was able to just sort of go on to Chat GPT and say, why should someone do this? And it gave me some really nice options that I had to then kind of massage into what I wanted, but it was a good starting point, so that was that was uh, quite good. I would use it again. Until, of course, it becomes Skynet, then I'll probably stop using it. The man most directly responsible is Miles Bennett Dyson. It makes killer vacuum cleaners. <laughs> Very true, Bob. Get to the chopper. What an amazing movie that is, the old Predator, the very first Predator movie. You know, that ended up launching however many sequels and, and spin-offs and all sorts of stuff. Um, and it was a movie that, I mean, it was kind of accidentally good. Um, I mean, I'm sure people know a lot of the stories about it. They originally cast... Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme as the creature um, and uh, that didn't work out so well so they then cast uh, I think it's Kevin Peter Hall is that does that now name sound right uh, great big tall ex-basketball guy and he was an excellent choice because not only was he incredibly tall he was also very athletic so he was able to sort of move with incredible agility in that suit and of course the design the design of the the predator outfit by stan winston was just amazing um and then the sound effects the sound there's that sort of that sort of gurgly noise that was actually done by the guy who does the um um optimus prime uh the voice of optimus prime he was the one that made the crackly sounds of the predator um yeah, the last thing we need is Predator doing a split, uh, yeah, doing a split in between the trees, which of course he does in so many of his movies. That I, I, don't, I can't remember what the movie is called, but there's that movie where John Gaw, Claude Van Damme is dancing, giving a bit of this. That's one of the funniest things ever seen. I mean, any time I watch that, I'm just in stitches. Um, but uh, the other really important thing about it is they didn't really have the proper formation of a script. And they wanted to try and get a particular writer involved, and apparently he didn't want to be involved, or something like that. I don't know the exact details. I'm mishmushing bits of information here together. But they ended up actually hiring the guy to act in the film. And then he was actually then doing script rewrites on the fly while he was there acting in it. So one of the guys, one of the main, um, one of the main guys in that team, was actually, was actually a writer a screenplay writer, and he wrote quite a bit of that film while they were making it, 
um, which, you know, I mean, talk about like an, an accident, you know, a happy accident with that. <laughs> I thought it was a documentary. Break us at the movies, that's me. Um, Peter Cullen, there we go. I, um, yeah, I, I love movies, so, you know, I'm always going to end up talking about movies in my live streams because they're such a huge part of my life. Um, I actually... Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> you should see it. It's, uh... It's, it's, Look, it's gone. It's like, it's it's kind of, uh, it's sticking up. Hang on, if I can try and get the view better. No, I'm not sure I can. It's it's poked right up. Um, scared the bejesus out of me, that one, because uh, none of the others have done that. Um, but yeah, anyhow, what I was going to say is that uh, I have a little, a little, um, it's kind of a movie chat group with Jay and with uh, Dana from Dana Does Stuff, uh, where we just talk primarily, I mean, sometimes we go on tangents, but the chat was primarily set up to talk about movie stuff. Um, and we just, uh, yeah, I mean, oftentimes when there's a movie I'll be like, yeah, has anyone seen this one? And then I, you know, and then I sit there and disagree with uh, Jay about the modern James Bonds that I actually quite like and he hates. I don't actually mind the Daniel Craig James Bond movies. Having said that, I've only watched two or three of them, I think. I, I haven't even seen the last one, whatever it's called. Skyfall or something, or a nice place to die or something like that. I can't remember. Um, all right, now we're going to clean some pads. So this is the one that blew up. Uh, let me see if I can get a, a better view. This is the one that blew up and scared me and made me squeal. Yeah. Focus, 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 focus. Focus. It'll do it. It will do it. It knows how to focus. There we go. There you go. So that's, uh, he popped up and scared me. I'm not going to cry though. I'm a big boy. Okay. So John Wick 4, very good movie. I'm pleased to hear that because I'll tell you what, it totally lost me on 3. I felt like 3 was off with the fairies. Um, I... Yeah, I, I mean, I, one of the big problems you have with John Wick, doesn't matter how many, how good you make the movie, you'll never do what John Wick 1 did. That, that first, I don't know, half an hour or an hour of John Wick 1, the very first movie, was just so intense and such, such a discovery process, I guess, um, that, uh, you know, with the whole, you know, don't you realise what you've just done, you know, this is Bubba Yeager, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> that was just awesome. And of course, you can never do that again. That can only ever be done once. Um, but John Wick 2 was kind of passable. John Wick 3, as I say, just became weird, in my opinion. Um, really lost interest. So I'm hopeful that John Wick 4 uh, improves. And certainly by the accounts that I've heard so far, it's uh, not a bad follum. That cat did play Jack in the Box. Good week. <laughs> hey. uh, nice place to die. <laughs> yeah, what's all I can think of? Um, going to see Dungeons and Dragons tonight. I, you know what? I saw the shorts of that and I thought, if that turns out good, that will be a pleasant surprise because it looked like it was going to be a great big pile of steaming shit. Now, I hope that it's not. I hope that it's good. But... Um, if it is good, it will be a surprise. YouTube channel, Al Kitty, the one with Jurassic Park T-Rex scene. No. Oh, yes. I think so. Sorry, I think I know what you're talking about, but I could be thinking of something completely different. 
It's that guy that puts his little black cat in famous movie scenes with a bit of um, fancy chroma key work and whatnot. If that's what I'm thinking of. Um, I, I I just I love the the noises that little cat makes in the videos. Just makes these little kind of little chirpy meows. That it does. Um, love it. Uh, glad you're fixing this and not me. Yeah, well, am I fixing it? I don't know. <clears throat> Time will tell. I'm hopeful. Uh, I mean, I'm going to probably put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for, I'd say, a good 30 minutes per side with the level of corrosion that's on there. Yeah. Because there are actually other uh, videos of that little kitty that that guy's done, not just the Jurassic Park one, it's done a few others as well, and they are also very good. We've been having fun with kitties lately because we have two newish kittens. We've had them now for probably about, oh, maybe 12 weeks or something like that. When we got them, they were very, very small. Too small, really, to be away from their mother. But thankfully, they were at an age where they could eat solid food, so we didn't actually have to nurse them and whatnot. They could, they could lap milk from a bowl. Um, and they're coming along quite well. Unfortunately, one of them has rather bad ringworm, which we are still treating. If anyone is not aware of what ringworm is. It is not a worm at all. It's actually a fungus. It's related to tinea. It's extremely contagious. Um, and it's a nightmare to treat. But, uh, and I suspect that if this cat wasn't so unbelievably good-natured, we probably would have gone, this is too much hard work. But he is just such a gorgeous little animal that we said, no, we will persevere. And we are getting on top of it, but boy, it's been taking a while because it was such a bad case that he had. The ringworm spores uh, can lie dormant apparently for um, many, many, many years. So when the ringworm spores sort of land on the ground or something, they just stay there until there's something to hook onto. Very good survivors. <laughs> funny Jay, funny ha ha. Um, so this is a two SI for anyone who is not who anyone who is joining recently. Macintosh two SI which was brought out as a slightly lower cost alternative to the 2CI. 2CI was remained on sale when this one came out and was a very, very popular computer. Uh, had a lot of things on over this. It was a slightly faster in that it was, uh, I think this one was 20 megahertz and the 2CI was 25 megahertz, uh, 68030. The 2CI had three new bus expansion slots this one had precisely zero. However, it did have a processor direct slot. And with that, you could then connect a card, which allowed you to put in a new bus card on the side. So sort of an adapter card. Um, 
and what are some four RAM slots, 30 pin RAM, so you can put up to 64 in it, what's well, 65 technically because there is one megabyte on the board. Um, what else? Doesn't have a floating point unit, but if you use that card that I just referred to, the one that allows you to connect a, um, a, 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 a new bus, the little PDS to new bus adapter, that one does have an FPU on it, so you can then add an FPU to it in that way. It is one of the few computers that you can easily um, uh, overclock, and the reason is that it has lots and lots of different kind of um, uh, like oscillators on it, and where some of the computers, that oscillator might control the speed of everything on the board, and so if you overclock it, you break things. This one here, it's just got one single oscillator for the CPU sort of bus thingy, and you can um, put a faster oscillator on there and make it work faster. You can take it up to, well, take it up to really anything, but you might, it may not work anymore, but I have taken mine up to 25. 2SI has an absolute nightmare power supply. Yes, ringworm and athlete's foot are the same fungus. That's what I mentioned before. So athlete's foot being tinea, they are the same. They are basically just uh, a variation of the same thing. And so you can treat them with the same stuff. So if you have ringworm, you can treat them with the same stuff they would use to, tr to treat tinea. Do do do. Alrighty, we're getting along here. We're getting along. I think it's eleven caps on this board, so it is not the worst, but it's not the best either, in terms of the amount of time it takes to recap. Uh, the one we always hate is the LC2. That's a big poo. <clears throat> Just got a little groove here. I want to check and make sure that that's not actually a break. So let's get the old multi-meter. And we'll put it into beepity beep mode. And we'll put one there and one there. And that feels very not continuity. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's not okay. It's not okay, people. Ow. Sharp. Beep, 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 beep. Sean is here. Hello there. Sean, how are you? Um people haven't seen it, Sean did a video recently where he got his wacky SE30 with the ridiculous amount of upgrades in it and he put in a grey cake which is the grayscale upgrade to the Macintosh SE30 um, and I was just mentioning at the beginning of the stream that's something that I did to my SE30 recently as well and it's amazing how fun that is, what a novelty it is to have grayscale on an SE30. Oh, which one of these? It's one of these, but I don't know which one of these. Um, the, uh, of course, Sean has the 040 accelerator. I managed to get um, I managed to get Wolfenstein running uh, on mine, Sean. But of course, keeping in mind mine's just an original 030 and running on System 7.1, uh, so I had that running in grayscale, and that was yeah probably two frames a second. Um, so I wouldn't go and say that it was the finest uh, game gaming experience, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, 
I, I had this thing before and I seem to have lost it. And I, I, I don't know how I've lost it because I'm sure I put it just here. Maybe I put it here instead by accident. I think I did, yeah. I think I put it in the wrong place. So, I'm going to try... Oh man, which one is it? I need to make a hole here. Need to make a hole. Because oh, I want to put a bit of wire down there. What size wire will I use? He asks himself. <clears throat> so I'm just thinking I might be able to shove the wire down there and melt it as I go. <clears throat> what version of Wolf 3D did you have? Now that is a very good question. Um, I suspect it might actually be my original copy that I got on floppy disks. Because um, I actually bought Wolfenstein 3D all them many years ago. As to what version that is, I will need to check and find out for you because I don't know off the top of my head. Now, will this wire fit down this hole? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Ugh. A little bit of... Uh, Shakespeare on a Saturday or Friday, depending on where you are. Will that fit? Yep, I think that'll fit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're running a much newer operating system on your SE30, aren't you, Sean? I think you're running like 8 or something on there. See, I'm running 7.1 on mine. So, you know, I think we're comparing apples with oranges here. Oh, swear word. Uh, sorry, I just dropped a piece of wire. It's not the end of the world. It really isn't, but I'm just annoyed. Okay, okay. Let's try that again, shall we? Yes, we shall. And let's see if we can get a bit of focus happening here for the good people at home. Yes, my uh, watch is telling me to stand up and saying you've been on your ass for way too long. I think this wire might be too fiat. Eight point one, yeah. See, that's probably why it doesn't run. Eight point one versus seven point one. It's one of these two. I believe it's one of these two. It's probably the one on the bottom because I'm pretty sure it's going to ground, but I could be wrong. Regularly am. Right, let's see if I can poke this through. It is really a buzz, I've got to tell you. You know, if you ever do get an opportunity to throw loads of money at bowl and get yourself a, uh, um, a grayscale thing for your SE30. Oh, stop it. It's kind of cool. Oh, and, and thank you for sending those pics, Sean, too. I forgot to mention. I, I, did, I meant to say thank you. Uh, weirdest thing in the world. That ghosting effect that was happening on mine, it just stopped. Just out of the blue, like next time I fired it up, the ghosting was gone. So, uh, I don't know what or why.
Oh God, this is getting so annoying and tedious and frustrating. I don't think I'm even in the right bloody hole here. Uh, uh, uh. Are we gonna try brute force? It sometimes works. It's one of these. It's definitely one of these. Ah, uh, where's my little hammer? I can't find my little hammer, I'll just improvise. Whack it with something. There we go, whack it with the brucinator. That's a stupid thing to whack it with because it's circular. <laughs> I know it's under here. Someone came in and messed up my office. I don't know who it was. But anyhow, it is really fun to get these computers to do what they were never designed to do. So that's what that's what Sean's here for. That's what Sh Sean was put on this earth to uh, to make computers do things that they were never designed to do. I may end up just if I can't get this in the next like minute, I'm going to use a smaller piece of wire. I'm going to use a smaller piece of wire. Actually, you know what? Stuff it. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to worry, worry about going down the hole here. I am just going to stick it to the end of that uh, pad. That's what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing because, because, because of the wonderful things he does. Right. Okay. Move on. Move on. Yep. Everyone happy. Let's just move on. Otherwise, we'll be here forever we've already been here forever was it two and a half hours sorry everyone <laughs> i drink things a little bit stronger than milk but milk is really important by the way i was listening to a podcast on it the other day and they were saying that in Australia, 7 out of 10 teenagers is calcium deficient. And one of the reasons for that is because they've been watching a lot of uh, influencers and whatnot that have been telling them that milk is bad and you should be eating, you should be having like almond milk and stuff instead. And it's going to be a big problem when those people uh, become senior citizens because they're going to have bones like chalk. Won't that be great? So drink your milk, people. Drink up. Lots of milk. Oh, jeez, getting a little bit of fume there. Not, not loving it, not loving it. Oh, unless, of course, you're part of the two-thirds of the population, world's population, who are lactose intoler intolerant, in which case I'd say... Drink your lactose free milk. Drink your lactose free milk. <laughs> I 
Well, Jay, you'd be wrong about that. I don't know who those some are, but there's so much scientific evidence to say contrary, completely contrary to what you have just said there, in terms of that calcium being absorbed in, the, in our bodies. It's, uh, it's pretty much incontrovertible, actually. Um, there have been countless studies on it. But the one thing for sure, this is a really important thing. This, this is probably the most important thing to keep in mind. If you are someone who does like nut-based milks, like things like almond milk, what you do have to remember is that there is virtually no nutrition to those whatsoever other than what they add afterwards. All of the nutrition you find in nuts goes during the process of turning them into a milk. I don't even think they should be called a milk. They should just be called nut water. But... Um, all of the, um, uh, all of the, the, you know, if you're wanting to get nutrition from nuts, eat nuts. That, it's as simple as that. Um, if you're wanting to drink, um, if you're wanting to get sort of the, yes, the, the things that you would get from milk, so that's, you know, the calcium, the iodine, um, protein, if you're wanting to get those sorts of things there, um, yeah, um, then you can get them from, obviously, mammal milk, but, uh, Nut milk is, it's basically just um, white water. So, as I say, the only nutrition it, that is in them is anything that has been added afterwards. This has been Health Chat with Breakers. Look after your bones, people. First 25 le years of your life is when you have to do it. 20 to 25 years of your life. Because once you get past that point, um, your bones start, you know, sort of uh, losing the density, and so your any pro or any calcium that you're having after that age is helping to maintain your strength, but it's not going to build it up. It, it's you do the building of those bones during the first 20 to 25 years of your life. So um, you need to make sure that you are um, at that younger age, you know getting lots and lots of calcium because if you don't get that calcium at that young age you'll end up then getting uh, lots and lots of health problems later on. 2SI, let's have a look see at that. <coughs> um, 2SI, 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 2SI. Why can't I find it? There it is, sorry. And I'm pretty sure it's just all the same. It's I think they're all just 47, yeah, okay, we've got the two axials down the bottom. I'm not even going to bother to replace them for this test. So it's 11, 47, microfarad, 16. So they're all the same. No complications there. All nice and easy. <laughs> Thanks for telling me 10 years too late. Yeah, so anyone out there that's under 25? Just, you know. Um, Overly, overly white milk. I don't know what overly white milk is. Uh, my wife is part of the, as I said, two thirds of the world population who have, uh, who are lactose intolerant. So we have lactose free milk in this house, and I'm fine with that because it tastes fine to me. I can't tell the difference to be honest. Um, I am part of the one third of the population that has developed uh, the ability to deal with lactose in milk. So I don't have any gut problems relating to it. But two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I bought 100 caps. That's 10%, over 10% of what I bought, gone already. Gabriel, hello there. JJ Brewbaker is here as well. Hello there. Going to installing one of uh, your Blue Scuzzy cards in my Color Classic. Well, how about that? Any suggestion on removing the hard drive without losing any skin? Well, the Color Classic, it should just be a slide out. You basically just have to take the back off, and then you should, there's a, a little clippy thing, and you should be able to pull that clip. It'll probably break because it's plastic. And then you just slide it out, and then it's got a little connectory thing there. 
Um, yeah, so, and that. The Color Classic's a real pain, actually. I've got one floating around here, the way it works, I find, anyway. I think it's the Color Classic that has that little connector. I can't remember. I'm forgetting things. Forgetting the answers. Uh, If you are someone who cannot drink milk at all, whether it be because of allergies or something like that, or if perhaps you're a vegan or something like that, um, the next best thing from a health perspective is soy milk. So that would that is the general recommendation from health professionals, that if you cannot have cow's milk, have, or animal milk, I should say, mammal milk, um, have, because uh, obviously there are alternatives, there's goats and whatnot, have uh, soy milk. There is still some nutrition value in that stuff. Do, do, do. You know, wouldn't it be funny if this thing just worked after recapping? And I don't think it will. But wouldn't it be funny if it did? Uh, I'm going to probably give it just a little bit of a toothbrush clean before firing it up because it does have a lot of gunk on the board. And then, of course, it will get a lot of ultrasonic king, king, king. This one I'm even going to put in the big ultrasonic. The one over my shoulder, the Vivor 30 litre. And if you want to know if it's a good ultrasonic cleaner, I'd highly recommend watching my review, my product review, of that cleaner, which I really enjoyed making, to be honest. Uh, there are a few things I did in editing and sort of did in the uh, post that I was like, oh, I like that. I'm going to start doing it in some other videos. <laughs> Once this is recapped and tested, regardless of the outcome, that will be the end of the stream. So I'm just setting expectations. You know how like when you, you know, if you, I don't know, taking a kid to the amusement park or something, and then you say, come on, five more minutes and then we're going. I just think it's important to set expectations for people sometimes that um, this will be recapped, it will be tested, and then I will be finishing the stream. And then hopefully by then, my wife will be back with the car and I can go and shop and buy things for the delicious dinner that I'm going to make tonight. Because I don't know if I, you know, actually I did mention it, but you know, depending on who was watching it, I am making a bolognese, and I make the best bolognese ever. Just saying. It's the bestest ever. Undisputable. Bestest. <sighs> Jay is definitely going to be doing some streams. We have discussed this. I have chatted to Jay about this. And he has committed to doing some live streams um, of, you know, various things. With, you know, because um, apart from everything else, I, I have trouble convincing him of this at times, but I actually think he's very engaging to watch. But he has also told me that he isn't going to be doing any live streaming until probably the beginning of next year. So, yeah, we just have to, we just have to wait patiently. I am probably going to be doing more video reviews. Um in the future. Um, I quite like doing reviews and reviews uh, tend to broaden the audience so that sometimes helps to get you know other people watching the channel. 
because uh, you know the growth is good i mean we can't all be action retros here with our 60,000 subscribers you know um who kind of overtook all of us was the new kid on the block and then came in and made us all look like rookies uh, now this is the one with the busted trace so i'm going to have to do a little joiny joiny join here um What is in my bolognese recipe? Well, now I know a lot of people say that you should do a combination of, what is it, pork and veal mince. Um, I generally just use beef mince in mine. Um, and ah, I, yeah, I mean all sorts of, I put mushrooms in there, I put tomato in there, I put, uh, what else? Uh, I put, I put a few interesting things in there that you may not necessarily expect. I put carrots in. I put capsicum, uh, sorry, cucumber in. No, not cucumber, the other one. Celery. That's the one, celery. I put celery in. And that helps sort of pat it out a little bit. And give it a little bit of, a bit more flavour. I put, um, what else? Bacon. Gotta have bacon. Gotta have bacon. Um, and onion, of course, and garlic. Um, all sorts of things. The trick is to work on computers without knowing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I've always done it. Um, oopsie. And I think it's working out fairly well. The thing that I always that I'm always so impressed with uh, with Sean's channel is the fact that he has a very uh, what would you call it? The people that subscribe to the channel uh, really want to watch that sort of content. So I have a I have in my channel I have subscribers some have subscribed for ultrasonic cleaners, some have subscribed for um, soldering, some have subscribed for vintage Mac stuff. So I've got this mix of people. And what that means is that when I release a video, let's say this video that I'm doing right now, where I'm working on a Mac, a whole stack of people that have subscribed to me, they've got zero interest in vintage Macs. None whatsoever. It's like, I'm not gonna watch that, no interest. And that's fine. And then I might do a video on soldering techniques and they watch that because that's what, why they subscribe to the channel in the first place. Um, Sean just gets so many people watching his videos. It's, it's just frustrating as hell for me. Uh, but I guess that's the whole thing when with my channel I have, a, I guess, a bit more diversity in some of the stuff that I do. And so when you do have diverse content, you then obviously run the risk that, you know, you might have a large number of subscribers, but half of them may not be interested in what you're, what you're doing because they subscribe for something else. <laughs> so anyhow, when Jay does do a live stream, and we will make sure he does at some stage, I will be sure to provide plenty of promotion on this channel so that everyone gets to watch yeah are you doing youtube for profit or fun it's a combination of the two um it is um okay so i'll just explain very quickly here my day job is a programmer now i'm uh self-employed so it's just me and I charge by the hour. Now what that basically means is that I, there is an absolute finite amount of money that I can make in doing that because there are only a certain amount of hours in the day and I am only one person. So if I want to make more money, I either need to work more hours or I need to put my rate up. That's it, That's I'm locked into that. That's just kind of how it is. Uh, when I do something like this, this is more of a passive income. So what that means is, uh, oh, hello. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so, uh, got donuts. 
So, yeah. So I went. Um. <laughs> Excuse me. So when you have something like this YouTube channel, I make videos and I post them on my channel, and people can be watching them, and I can be earning advertising revenue while I'm asleep. So that is quite appealing to have a, another source of income that is not dependent on the amount of hours that I work. And so, to some extent, yes, you could definitely say that there is, uh, that money is a factor when it comes to uh, working on this. It's, it's, it is very time consuming. Um, but yeah, so it's a way of actually bringing in some extra income. When I did my um, my video on making my laundry ultrasonic cleaner, I had some really good uh, advertising revenue coming in. So, you know, there is money to be made. <laughs> this stuff here that I'm doing here for the channel, this is really primarily for fun. Uh, when I look at the videos that I do that actually make money, it's not these ones. Um, these are definitely for my own entertainment and for anyone who's watching this entertainment as well. Yep. I like donuts. I like donuts. I like donuts. Donuts make me happy. Just what happens when my wife goes out, comes back with donuts. Mm. <laughs> but think of what you get for that Jay I mean it's a bargain don't you reckon right I think that's it Ooh, ow. Oh, oh, ow 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 I think that's it ah ah yeah. I really shouldn't be eating this with my hands that have been touching Solder and gunk and flux and that's stupid. But it's a donut. Just going to quickly check that all these are soldered on properly. I did both sides. <laughs> My rates might even go up next year, you know. I'll get, they go up $10 every time I get another 10,000 subscribers. Oh. <clears throat> I'm heading towards the old 50,000 at the moment. That's the next big thing for me. Sorry about the talking with a mouthful. It must be very unpleasant for you and I do apologise. Just going to do a little bit of cleaning here, nothing crazy. Just get some of this gunk off with a bit of alcohol. Shouldn't have let Bernie. <laughs> oh, I miss little Bernie. I used to love coming in here and just sitting here at the computer and um, chatting away. I was probably having uh, chats with uh, Jay and or Dana on uh, you know Skype well not Skype Zoom or StreamYard or whatever and uh, little Bernie would come in here and Bernie b being Bernadette the chicken that I had would come in here and perch up on my uh, um, 
up on my microscope. It's fun. There we go, that's pretty good. Then we'll just give it a bit of a dry with some hot air. This is not clean, by the way. I'm not trying to suggest that what I just did made this clean. I'm just trying to move some of the worst of the gunk away. This will get ultrasonicerized. So, expected outcome, same as before, switch on, white screen, nothing else. I can't tell if there's a chime, because the way this works is that the speaker is actually connected under here, so um, I don't have the case or the speaker here, so um, we're not going to be plugging a speaker in, so we won't hear the chime, but... I expect that we'll get the same white screen and not get any further. Oh. And then we'll clean it. All right, all right. Mm. Mm. Yum. That is nice. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Let's go. Now. Zulu's cousin. Monitor. Bruce's teeny weeny little monitor. The Brankus 1000. Okay. And we were getting a video signal, which of course means a lot of things are working. Um, and then a bit of a power supply. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Smells like something's melted. Alrighty. Okay, let's see what happens. Are we ready? Three, two, seven. I've got the video signal coming through, we've got the white screen. Essentially what we should see is when it actually starts reading from the ROMs, you see the little corners coming to the screen. Corner, 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 corner. You see a cursor appear. And then eventually you then launch into the you know, flashing question mark and all that sort of stuff. Now we're not getting that at the moment. Ooh, the power's getting hot. Come on, pal. Um, so I think that's normal, though. I vaguely remember the power gets hot and these always just feeling a few things to see if we're getting heat so anyhow this is a really really common thing with the 2SI a lot of the time 2SIs have this there is I think it's almost like the Macintosh SE30 SEMA CMAC Dan hello there Dan how are you uh, how'd you go with that Vegemite mate that uh that's some tasty stuff isn't it yeah you gotta gotta admit that's some tasty stuff um, so, yeah, so anyhow, this is pretty much what we would expect from this. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I am going to put this into the ultrasonic cleaner, the one behind me. This is the Vivor 30 litre cleaner. Um, don't forget to watch my review and don't forget if you want to buy one, there are links in the description with a 5% discount. Um, hope that's hypnotizing chooks all week. He's read the book. He's read the book. Yes, I saw on Facebook. I saw that you, I see you did a little a little post of uh, the little COVID uh, little COVID rat test there. So uh, yeah, sorry to hear it. I hope it's not knocking you around too much. I mean, it's 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 interesting the way it affects different people. I mean, my uh, aunt and uncle just recently had uh, um, uh, recently just had COVID and it knocked them around a fair bit. They had good days and bad days and that sort of thing. But so I hope it's uh, I hope it's not laying you up too much. Um, it gives you a chance to sit down and do your reading and read uh, How to Hypnotize Chooks by uh, 
uh, one of the Australian um, philosophers, um, a cricketer by the name of Max Walker. Uh, had it back in 2020, so it wasn't so bad. So this is your second time of having it down, I assume. I, uh, I know some people that have had it like four times. It's like, far out, man. I need to stay home. Oh, good, good, good. That's good to hear. Well, that is good to hear, Dan. I'm very pleased to hear that your strength is coming back. Okay, so now the downside is I'm about to finish this live stream, but I do thank you very much for joining. Um, the This is a Macintosh 2SI. So we started off with, so there's a little recap of events for anyone who is watching this, didn't see the beginning. We started off with a CD-ROM drive. Uh, we have recapped that. I have every reason to think that that will work fine, so I need to clean that. So it's going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner and get cleaned. Um, then after that, we decided to go with this 2SI. Now, this 2SI was in terrible condition, as in there were actually two components that had fallen off it. Uh, I've cleaned those up or I've, I've replaced them, but what we do know is that, given the fact that some components have fallen off this, there are some pretty bad solder, you know, pretty bad pads on this. Um, and there's a very good chance that when I stick this in the ultrasonic cleaner, more things will fall off it. It's kind of a good way of finding out which ones are loose though. Um, so this 2SI, which we're able to get to this stage here, tells us a lot of things are working. You're not gonna get to this stage without your CPU working. Um, we're getting power through to the, um, the SCSI here. So we've got, we know we've got power running all through the board, um, but we're just not getting through the ROMs. We're just not getting to loading all of the uh, stuff from the ROMs and it's something it's something not working so that's my assessment uh, this is if we want to be really technical there's something not working so i'm going to chuck this in the cleaner we will try it again after that if it still doesn't work i can have a look around and see if i've got any bad traces or any pins coming off or anything like that and then um and then we'll see if we can get this one working uh, this will replace another 2si board that was sent to me by the same person uh, we've had trouble getting it working. So the idea is if this one is working, then we'll just use this board instead of that one. So, um, so anyhow, um, I will jump across back here to the looking at me, look at me, look at me. Um, thank you everyone for joining me for this live stream today. Um, it is now 3 p.m. I'm gonna have to head out and go and buy ingredients for the awesome meal that I'm gonna cook. Just a reminder, if you haven't watched Evil Dead lately, you should. Um, and uh, thank you for the super chats, thank you for the company, thank you for keeping this chat active, interesting and fun. I do appreciate it. Great bunch of people coming and watching this and once again if you are watching this on the replay, hello to you as well and thank you for making it this far. So I, uh, my next video is probably going to be uh, a review video for a microscope, um, a, 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 you know, like an analog one, not a digital one. Steve, Mac84, has just released a video, it's my understanding, of working on the power books. So if you're still in the mood to watch some videos, jump across to his channel and check that one out, uh, where he's working with his new best friend, Duke Miami. Um, so anyhow, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you at the next live stream, and I will see you at the next one. Bye. Bye.